Alright, Shalom Akim. Before I get started, I want to give all praises, honor, and the glory to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, Waha Kodash, and of course, as always, double honors to our apostles and our elders of well, that great millstone, and salutations to all you sincere Akim that are preaching this word in all truth and in sincerity. So what you see right here on the screen is a video, a lesson that the elder from the Mississippi camp, all right, the elder Kazak, he um, did a lesson, what will you do when this is mandatory? Now, those of us in the truth and the spirit know what he's referring to. And he's referring to the Karagma, the MOTB, which is spoken of in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, verse 15 on down. All right, all right. The micro C hip, okay, which you're going to need, as it says right here on the screen, which you're going to need in order to buy, sell, trade, have access to, you know, general assistance, um, have access to benefits um, in Esau's world, part of Esau's system, all right, which, you know, the apostles and elders, brothers, you know, of Great Millstone and like-minded groups that are all part of the same body we we exhort and we admonish you you know not to participate in receiving that device man you know so the first scripture I'm going to get is right here in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 you enduring in the faith all right by you being part of this ministry ministering to the flock teaching prophesying exhorting all right and admonishing as well you know our fellow Akiam wa Akwathium you know our fellow brothers and sisters who are Israelites, all right, to whom pertaineth the adoption spoken of in Revelation, the ninth chapter. Okay, you can only receive this truth, and you can only be saved if you're an Israelite. And it is not according, you know, to your outward appearance, but it's according to your bloodline, your lineage. So because thou hast kept the word of the Lord's patience, you know, and you, you endured unto the end, he goes on to say, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which the hour of temptation is when Esau has you, you know, Attempting to feed you, being idle with things offered unto idols, meaning when he attempts to chastise you, torture you into receiving the karagma, the micro -seeb. okay, the beast mark, all right, it says, we shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So the whole world is going to be tested. Okay, to receive that mark. To receive that device in their flesh. Alright, now the main world that he's going to try, okay, 
It's the world of Israel. All right, you so-called black Hispanics, Native Americans, and of course you Israelite foreigners. All right, and they're gonna try us by all means. Let's get that in the Book of Wisdom of Solomon. he is not for our turn and the righteous is you know the Akim the Israelites women and men that are against this system that believe in the Lord that believe in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai now of course it starts with the elect the prophets because we're not for Esau's turn Okay, we are not about to about to bow down to the image of the beast, to this man's new world order, to his wicked system. Okay, we're already against it. That's why we prophesy against Mount Seir. Okay, that's why we're shaking the hand at the nobles, which are the elite. Okay, the Illuminati. We're not for this devil's turn. We're totally against him. That's why we prophesy so hard against him. You got other Israelites that are saying, this man isn't important. This man is important. Okay. He is the synagogue of Satan. He is the, the elite on the left hand. The kings on the left hand the rulers of darkness of this world and we were set up to preach righteousness the gospel so we're not for his turn we are against him alright and he knows this that's why it says therefore let us lie in wait for the righteous because he is not for our turn and he is clean contrary to our doings that's why we're out there on the highways and byways prophesying that the, the, the morality and things conducted here are wicked and they lead to death. Okay. It says, He abradeth us with our offending law. Yet we're telling Esau that he's going to be destroyed and he's going to go into captivity for the unrighteous dealings and the wickedness that he promotes here. And he mainly promotes it towards you Israelites to have you offend the Lord so that the Lord can destroy you, man. Because Esau's a sore loser. And Esau, once again, is a so-called white man. All right. They descend from Esau, Edom. They are the Edomites. It says, and objected to our infamy the transgressings of our education because all Esau teaches you is to be a is to be a carnal brute beast to be evil look what he's teaching the kids the children I should say which the majority of you are kids anyway which a kid is nothing but a baby goat or a sacrificial animal alright but he's teaching the children in his schools as part of his educational system to be sexually perverse. Okay, that's just one thing. All right. When you go to his medical field, he has you sign a Hippocratic Oath and give people poison, man. Okay. So Esau transgresses, transgresses through his laws, through his education, through his whole system. Verse 13, he professeth to have the knowledge of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and he calleth himself the child of the Lord, and that's what we do. Okay, we profess, this is our profession, 
our job as Israelites to bring about the knowledge of the Lord. And we preach that we are the children of the Lord. We call ourselves Yasharala, which means he is a prince of the power. Okay, we're a nation of kings and priests. Okay, we're the children of God. We're the children of Yahweh Bashim Shai. It goes on to say he was made to approve our thoughts. You see, Esau knows. This was written there in the book of Wisdom of Solomon. Okay, we understand the thoughts of Esau. And every thought of Esau is against the Lord and his people. Is against life. Here it is, we're teaching you the right way. But Esau's whole system is to teach you contrary to Yahweh Bashim Shai and his laws. To destroy you. Verse 15, he is grievous unto us, even to behold these devils. <laughs> Don't want to see us out there on the streets, man. Okay. That's why they're doing everything in their power to keep the elect from waking up. To keep the one-third dormant. Two-thirds, they already have those. Satan already has two-thirds. Okay. Okay. But this is grievous unto Esau. That's why real soon he's going to come down with that great wrath. It says, For his life is not like other men's. His ways are of another fashion. And our lives are not like other men's. Especially not like other Israelites. Whether they be of the circumcision or not. Whether they know they're Israelites or not. Okay, our lives are, you know, very much simple. We keep to ourselves. We're not out there chasing after the ways of this world. You know, we're not even chasing after, you know, to try to make something out of our lives when it comes to this world, man. Okay, this is what we're focused on. It's preaching the word. Is is praying and hoping to be part of the elect. It says his ways are of another fashion. That's why people are so bugged out when they see us on the highways and byways every week. You know, some people are, will tell us, you're young. You got the rest of your life ahead of you. Why don't you go enjoy your life? You know, why don't you go chase, to, chase after girls? You know, start a family. Go to school. But that's not our fashion, man. That's not what we were created for. Okay, the existence of the elect, the prophets, is to do the will of the Lord and prophesy against Mount Seir. Okay, to prophesy of the coming and dreadful day of the Lord. Okay, to wake up the elect. That's our profession. In verse 16. We are esteemed of him as counterfeits. Yeah. They are counterfeits. He saw Edom. These Amalekites. Okay. They're not the real Israelites. They're not God's chosen people. Okay. Their father is the devil. Alright. That's why the lust of their father they do. Esau is not about you know, um, equality. Esau's not about prosperity of the human being, all right? Esau is about his, his own. And to go even deeper, the prosperity of the elite, okay? They are counterfeits, okay? They're against life. He abstaineth from our ways as from filthiness, because Esau's way are, ways are filthiness. Okay, idolatry, homosexuality, okay, covetousness, violence, okay, witchcraft. Okay, 
that's that's his ways, man. He pronounced at the end of the just to be blessed, because the Lord said, "Okay, the end of the righteous man is peace, man. The end of this world is our salvation, man. Okay, the dead and the Mashiach shall rise first. All right." And make it this boast that Yahweh Bashim Yahushai is his father. It says that all throughout the scriptures. Okay. That the Lord is our father. Let us see if his words be true. And let us prove what shall happen in the end of him. For if the just man be the son of Yahweh, he will help him and deliver him from the hand of his enemies. Let us examine him with despitefulness and torture. You see, they're going to try us, man. They're going to test us by means of torture, by means of despitefulness. Okay, they're going to uh, demonize us in the eyes of the world. And they're going to torture us in their synagogues, man. Says that we may know his meekness and prove his patience. Patience is a virtue, man. You need patience in order to make it through this. Okay. Let us condemn him with a shameful death, for by his own saying he shall be respected. Let's see. So Esau's going to come against us, man. All right. They're going to torture us. We're going to be tried, man. But if we endure, the Lord is going to keep some of us from the hour of temptation. Some of us have to go through it as part of prophecy. But some are going to be delivered from that. Some brothers are going to get spiritual power and not have to go through that temptation, that trial of the mark of the beast. This is the last scripture I'm going to get, and I'm going to close it. It's Revelation 2 and 10. Fear not those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. And the devil is not talking about the spiritual demon, Satan. The devil is talking about Esau, Edom. The word devil simply means an accuser, a slanderer. And that's a so-called white man. It says that ye may be tried once again, meaning tested. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. And that could be literally ten days. Or longer, or less. Ten is just a number of completion you could be in there an hour minutes or weeks months be thou faithful unto death and i will give thee a crown of life so be faithful unto death all right now the elder kazak posted you know what will you do when it's made mandatory because it's going to be mandated the whole world is going to be tried. So what are you going to do? Are you going to submit? Or are you going to be faithful unto death? If you are, the Lord is going to give, grant you and give you eternal life. Which is rulership and eternal life. So with that all praise is honor and glory. To Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Wa Harakakudash, and of course, as always, double honors to our apostles and our elders that rule well at Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect, preaching this word in all truth and in sincerity. Shalom.